Thank you, Jan. So, uh, after this uh, very nice demonstration of the capabilities of uh, our uh, high power lasers, it's the time to go forward and to see how we are standing uh, with the implementation of the experimental setups that will use these high power laser beams. So, I introduce the next speaker, uh, Dr. Katalin Tikos. He is the head of the laser-driven experiment uh, department, and he will give us uh, an introduction and a description of the experimental setups uh, that will use high-power laser beams. Thank you, Kali. Um, so I'm Katalin Tikos. Uh, it is a great honor for me to uh, present in front of you the experimental setups on behalf of uh, LDD and LGED teams. Uh, I see in the audience many professors and scientists uh, from the from all over the world. Um, as you can see this uh, interest um, from the scientific community for our uh, uh, facility. So uh, the idea of the tour of the experimental area was to showcase showcase our facility. Uh, basically to uh, organize uh, an open house so that everybody can see what we've got inside. So uh, after uh, many years of uh, planning, uh, designing and building, uh, we have now, we are, we are ready now to, uh, to start experiments with users. So we are getting ready to receiving users. As Professor uh, Tamaka pointed out, the 100 uh, terawatt and 1 petawatt uh, areas are uh, in the process of commissioning. So um, the first shots in the 1 petawatt area will be taken at the end of November. The 10 petawatt experimental area uh, will be ready next year when we get the focusing optics. Uh, next year we will take also the first shots. So. Um, I will show you a summary of the of the movie. Okay, um, we we we're gonna show a movie yeah, of the experimental facilities. Uh, we're gonna start with the ten petawatt uh, experimental areas. We have uh, areas E1 and E6. E1 is for solid targets. E6 is for gaseous targets. Uh, then we're gonna move to uh, the one petawatt experimental area. We call it E5. And uh, you see there the target chambers. Uh, there are three target chambers. One is, set, is uh, specifically for generating helical beams. And then we're going to show the we're going to show you in the movie the 100 terawatt uh, experimental area, uh, which we call it E4. At the end, uh, we're going to show the laser experiments, diagnostics laboratory and the target laboratory. These are essential uh, facilities for uh, supporting our experiments. So uh, please, can you play the, the movie with the, with the experimental tour? see two large target chambers that are the largest here at Lion P. You will also see a network of vacuum pipes. Each vacuum pipe has a large diameter of one meter to accommodate the laser beam which has almost half a meter diameter. Let's take the tour. is a high-power laser facility intended to serve users worldwide. E1 E6 experimental area is designed to allow us to perform 10 petawatt laser matter interaction experiments. Here we plan to do a broad range of experiments studying the fundamentals of high-intensity laser beams interacting with matter in the form of solid, liquid and gaseous targets 
with the aim of generating beams of energetic particles. These beams could then be used to irradiate materials and biological systems in order to test their behavior in extreme environments. An important feature of this facility is the 10 petawatt laser beam delivery system, which has as an input two 10 petawatt and one 1 petawatt laser beams coming from the high power laser system. Thus, simultaneously, two of the three input beams can be guided towards any of the three interaction chambers E1, E6 and E7. The entire laser beam has to be propagated within a high vacuum environment, thus what you see in the movie is the vacuum system hosting an array of large mirrors, remote control positioning stages, laser beam diagnostics and control systems. E1 E6 experimental array is designed to take advantage of the two 10 petawatt laser beams operating at up to one shot per minute and one 1 petawatt laser beam operating at up to one shot per second. Due to the specific nature of the experiments envisioned here, two interaction chambers have been built. One chamber is dedicated to laser gas targets interactions, where we will be testing and developing high energy electron acceleration techniques. Another interaction chamber is dedicated to laser solid or liquid target interactions to carry out experiments in ion acceleration techniques with high power lasers and nuclear experiments with those ion beams. A third interaction chamber, E7, is planned to host combined high power laser and gamma beam experiments. One interaction chamber is our premier experimental place for the 10 petawatt focused laser beams interacting with solid or liquid targets. Here we can have simultaneously deliver up to two high power laser beams selected from the two 10 petawatt and one 1 petawatt beams. The final focusing mirrors are to be housed within the E1 interaction chamber itself, along with targets, targeting systems, X-ray and gamma ray spectrometers, charged particle energy spectrometers, and passive detectors. The commissioning experiments are aimed at proton acceleration and intense gamma beam production. E6 interaction chamber has a 10 petawatt or a 1 petawatt laser beam delivered via a 13.5 meter long parabolic mirror located at the end of a long vacuum chamber, thus allowing for electron acceleration schemes to be developed with long gas targets. By using a 10 petawatt beam, it is expected that such experiments will evolve to deliver 10 plus giga electron volt pulsed electron beams at up to one shot per minute while the 1 petawatt laser beam will generate electron beams of a few giga electron volt energy and up to 1 pulse per second. A second beam of 10 petawatt is planned to be focused via a short focal parabola, f over 2, thus allowing future high field QLD experiments to be performed when the relativistic electron beams are scattered onto high intensity electromagnetic field. E6 experimental area is planned to be populated with an extensive array of dedicated instrumentation for laser pulse, plasma, electron beam characterization, along with special design targets. So let's take the tour of the one petawatt experimental area. one petawatt experimental area. Each setup here can operate two laser beams simultaneously, each having the power of one petawatt. This area has a multifold utility. On one hand, we will study matter in extreme radiation fields, and also we plan to do some biology experiments to irradiate life cells with large doses of radiation 
in a short period of time. On the other hand, we plan to test some setups that will be installed in the Tech Pentawan Experimental Lab. Right now we are running a commissioning experiment where we uh, aim to benchmark the proton acceleration in the DNSA vision. The first shots will be fired uh, at the end of November. The E5 experimental area is the one housing the two 1 petawatt laser arms that can operate at one shot per second. Here are planned a broad range of experiments, starting from studying the fundamentals of high intensity laser beams interaction with matter, up to applications of irradiating materials and biological systems for their testing in extreme environments, and laser driven imaging techniques for biomedical studies. The area has a clean room with optical tables dedicated to the implementation, cleaning and inspection of the optical setup before its installation in the vacuum chambers. The system is composed of three vacuum chambers, each with specific purpose in the experiment. Two turning boxes with mirrors inside are used, one for the injection of alignment laser beams, the other for routing the laser beams towards the required vacuum chamber. The first commissioning experiment with one petawatt laser beam is being prepared in the C3 chamber. This experiment will perform ion acceleration using high power laser pulses. Optical references are placed in the chamber, laser beam is aligned and this goes towards the final alignment of the focusing mirrors and diagnostics to the first ion acceleration with laser beams in the IMP facility. Walking to the 100 terawatts experimental area. heavy concrete walls of the building. You can see there the door made of lead of the 100 terawatt area. It's a thick door. It's built this way for radio protection. This is the 100 terawatts experimental area. This was the first experimental area commissioned at Elian B. The first experiment started in uh, March this year uh, during the collaboration with a group of uh, Professor Gerard Mourou. So the, the aim was to study the damage threshold of optical materials and the optical broadening of thin fields. Right now we are um, running a commissioning experiment which consists in uh, electron acceleration in a gas jet using the laser weight field technique. Uh, we have started in August and shortly after in September and October 
we demonstrated the uh, electron acceleration to energies of about 200 to 300 MeV. Many people from our department, from the laser team department, from the technical division, from Ovidius Stecilanus group, together with Professor Tamaka, have uh, contributed to this uh, success. Let's visit the area. This is the E4 experimental area. This target area is dedicated to experiments with laser power of 100 terawatt. At the entrance, we have overcoats, overshoes and other accessories to guarantee a good level of cleanliness in the experimental area. This is the main experimental hall. These small chambers are turning boxes, which diverts the laser beams coming from the laser bay to the main experimental chamber. In the middle of the room, there is an optical table that accommodates various diagnostics and devices. On the screen, it is shown a recorded laser focal spot grabbed at full power. The experimental setup shown in the video has been used for the acceleration of electrons from gas targets via the laser wake field acceleration mechanism. Those are on-axis diagnostics for the detection of electron beams characteristics as total charge, beam shape and pointing fluctuations. The spot on the screen is an example of the on-axis electron beam profile. A typical broadband energy spectrum of the electron beam is shown on the left-hand side of the screen. The main experimental chamber has several cubic meters in volume. It can be accessed via a large and heavy lid located on the top of the chamber. The lid is removed by lifting it up with the help of a crane. This experimental setup for electron acceleration is all optical and consists of golden parabolic mirror that is used to focus the laser beam onto a gas target. A laser light leakage from this dielectric mirror is used for diagnosing the laser back reflected light and the far field and near field of the input laser beam by using that system of diagnostics on the corner. Part of the incoming laser beam is picked up by this small mirror and used as an optical probe. That system of optics is the delay line of the optical probe. This is the gas target with a nozzle of 2 mm in diameter. 
the accelerated electrons can be sent forward along the laser axis or by inserting the magnet can be reflected towards the Lanex screen for the energy resolution. This Lanex screen is used to detect the low energy electrons. Behind the screen there is an optical system that is used for the alignment and optimization of the laser spot. Inside this black box there is the Lanex screen for the high energy electron detection. Other optical diagnostics and the shadowgraphy and top view of the gas target and low energy electron spectrum are viewed through this window. The detection setup of such diagnostics is located on an optical table placed near the interaction chamber. This is the camera for the low energy electron spectrum. This is a system of the optics for the shadowgraphy. This optical system is the measurement of the laser pulse duration and spectrum at full power shot. The student is aligning the infrared laser beam by using an infrared viewer. You can clearly see the laser spot on the screen of the viewer. Acceleration of electrons with quasi-monoenergetic energy spectrum has been demonstrated in pure helium. Electrons with broadband energy spectra, as shown in the figure, have been obtained in a mixture of helium and nitrogen. Total electron energy ranged from 150 up to 250-300 MeV. So this is the Laser Experiments Diagnostics Laboratory. It provides support for all the experimental areas. All setups that uh, will be implemented in the experimental areas are first tested here. As an example, the adaptive optics for the one petalon beam, that is the deformable mirror, is on the bench right now for testing. Another example is the uh, focusing optics uh, and its mobile support for the one petalon commissioning experiment has been tested here. We also build an uh, interferometric setup for plasma diagnostics. Uh, we uh, assemble and we align the Thomson parabola. We test many CCDs, cameras and other devices. Let's take the tour of the lab. The Laser Experiments Diagnostics Laboratory is an integral part of VLIMP research facility, serving as a support laboratory for the construction and development of instrumentation for the two of the experimental departments in VLIMP, namely the Laser Driven Experiments Department and the Laser Gamma Experiments Department. The structure of the laboratory is divided into five areas having different functionalities, and that allows parallel development of experimental setups. The laboratory facilitates the following critical activities construction, alignment and testing of optical systems used in the experimental setups that are developed according with the technical design reports. As examples in this direction are the laser beam test systems for the 10 petawatt and 1 petawatt experimental areas, the laser target plasma interferometry systems and plasma spectroscopy systems. Another important activity in the lab is setting up the instrumentation dedicated to the laser beam diagnostics. We can name here the system used to measure the duration and shape of femtosecond laser pulses 
and the systems for measuring the energy and shape of the laser wavefront in the interaction chambers for 10 petawatt, 1 petawatt and 100 terawatt laser experiments. State-of-the-art mechanical and optomechanical systems are used in all experimental setups and this laboratory is where all the initial tests on these systems are done. The tests of the deformable mirrors for the wave front control, the large focusing parabolas and high precision systems for target alignment that are used in the experimental setups have to be first tested in this lab. All the sensitive optomechanical testing takes place in two ISO 8 clean rooms that ensure the proper conditions for working with such systems granting the success of the experiments that already take place in ELIMP facility. Acting as an international user facility, ELIMP will have external users bringing sensitive equipment for building new experimental setups that will be constructed and tested in the same laboratory. We are visiting now the target lab. This is an essential facility of the line P. So here we will be producing the targets for uh, the laser shots. All the work is done in clean room conditions here. Let's visit the lab. Embedded within the ELIMP support complex, the target laboratory extends over 270 square meters of ISO 6 and ISO 7 clean room environment. This particular lab is dedicated to the development, fabrication, characterization and micro-assembly of targets for experiments with high-power laser and gamma beams, accommodating a wide range of state-of-the-art equipment and a specialized team of material scientists and engineers. The target laboratory is set up to address demands of targets and provide support throughout the entire process. From the proposal evaluation, the technical feasibility and the final target's delivery. On top of that, it also performs research and development activities in order to continuously develop and upgrade novel target's designs. The fabrication room houses two main deposition systems. The first of these is a custom-made ultra-high vacuum RF or DC sputtering deposition tools dedicated to the fabrication of ultra-thin and thin nanometer films, as well as a thick micrometer films using metals, oxides, nitrides, alloys, nanoparticles and hybrid structures such as multi-layers. These tools' main features include a vacuum chamber dedicated to oxide deposition with four RF or DC magnetrons and a mass spectrometer, a second vacuum chamber for metal and nitride deposition equipped with six RF or DC magnetrons, a nanogen unit for nanoparticle deposition down to 13 nanometer, and the final load log for in situ sample transfer between the process chamber and for the argon ion and milling process with rotating and tilting capabilities.
The deposition system allows working with wafers up to 150 mm in diameter and deposition temperature up to 850 degrees Celsius for metals and nitrides or 1000 degrees Celsius for oxides. It has a base pressure of 5 times 10 to the minus 9 millibar, rotating sample stage and controllable target to sample distance. The structuring equipment available for surface patterning via optical lithography includes a mask aligner for the alignment of lithography mask on both sides of the wafer, a programmable spin coater and two thermostatic hot plates. Equipped with a deep UV lamp, it allows a lateral resolution down to 500 nanometer on wafers up to 200 millimeter in diameter. The reactive ion etching tool is used for surface structuring via chemical and physical dry etching by means of inductively coupled plasma, equipped with an ICP source and two high and low frequency generators. This system allows for Bosch and cryo etching technologies in the same chamber for yielding vertical structures with smooth sidewalls and a broad high to width ratio. Several optical microscopes are available for performing fast analysis of surfaces. The main optical microscope feature episcopic bright field and dark field imaging, episcopic differential interface contrast, bright field simplified polarization, as well as dioscopic bright field and epifluorescence modes. The microscope is equipped with a motorized sample stage, a halogen lamp, a CCD camera and several magnification objectives. The second ultra-high vacuum fabrication system is used for yielding thin and ultra-thin metallic films using E-beam deposition. This system features a multi-pocket source up to six different materials. A 10 to the minus 9 millibar base pressure, an up to 850 degrees Celsius deposition temperature, and rotating sample stage for homogeneous deposition. The characterization room is dedicated to the analysis and examination of the obtained targets. Here, several equipment are available. First of them, the scanning electron microscope is supplied with an energy dispersive X-ray spectrometer for the elemental analysis and an electron backscatter diffraction detector for crystallographic characterization. The CEM is equipped with an electron beam lithography tool for nano and microstructuring of the surface of the targets. It also holds a Peltier stage for biological samples, an STM unit, a beam deceleration mode, and in situ plasma decontamination. Moreover, two tabletop sputtering systems are available for coating non-conductive samples with gold and carbon. The second equipment, a multi-purpose X-ray diffractometer, is dedicated to high-resolution microstructural and quantitative analysis of powders, thin, thick, or multi-layer films, but also of bulk samples and nanoparticles of materials with crystalline, amorphous, and nanocrystalline structure. The XRD equipment is used to analyze the composition, orientation and texture, strain and stress of the samples, thickness, density, surface uniformity, phase identification, and size distribution of the samples. Its main features include a 9 kW rotating anode, a high-resolution hybrid detector, 5-axis goniometer for in-plane and out-of-plane analysis, and the microfocus. The Atomic Force Microscope is a perfect tool for morphology studies with sub-nanometric resolution. Mainly used in contact and semi-contact modes, it also performs analysis like lateral and electrical force imaging, phase imaging, spreading resistance imaging, magnetic resonance, Kelvin probe, and adhesion force imaging. The optical profilometer uses white light interferometry for fast 2D and 3D surface morphology for roughness and thickness determination. It includes three scanning modes, interferometric, confocal, and focus variation with 0.2 microns resolution for the XY axis and 0.1 nanometer on the Z axis. 
The chemistry room is mainly dedicated to surface conditioning and thermal treatments of the samples. For this, several ovens are used, like the calcination oven, used to perform thermal treatments in air or under controlled atmosphere suitable for thermal treatments up to 1300 degrees. The acceptable sample size is 200 mm. The second available oven is a tubular furnace which, similar to the calcination oven, can be used to perform thermal treatments up to 1300 degrees under air or controlled atmosphere but also under vacuum, down to 10 to minus 5 millibar. The vacuum drying stove is mainly used in the drying process of the glassware. Other chemistry laboratory accessories are also available – analytical balance, pH meter, stirring plates and an electrochemical station for nanowire synthesis with power supply, electrochemical cell, digital multimeter and so on. Okay, so thank you for uh, all these uh, very interesting presentations. So we have to thank uh, the IT compartment and all the young researchers who enthusiastically volunteered for uh, creating these movies about the experimental setups and the support laboratories that are operational at uh, ELIM.